from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. It's become like a common thing in the NHL for guys to fall in love with my sloppy seconds. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. You know, every day, every day. There's shocking stuff going on. Every day there is shocking stuff going on. And uh, because of the economy, I'm uh, blown away by stuff that's happening at a rapid rate. I will tell you that um, one of my competitors will go away within a week. I will say who it is. One of my competitors will not be on the air one week from today. It's a fact. One, you you write it down. You're going to remember it a week from now. One of my competitors will not be on the air a week from now. Huh? I said one of my competitors will not be on the air one week from now. You, you'll check. You'll see. You'll remember I said this. Last week, uh, Chicago radio legend Steve Dahl... Say it! He's gone. The station we run in Dallas has changed format. And you know that um, there's been a lot of talk. In fact, we talked about this on the air. Jay Leno is uh, was forced off The Tonight Show as of the end of May next year. Well, he, of course, it appears he voluntarily stepped down, but uh, we all know Jay Leno is not ready to retire. So Jay Leno, uh, after, I believe it's May 29th of next year, he will not be hosting The Tonight Show anymore. Conan O'Brien is going to replace him. Conan O'Brien is moving to Los Angeles to be the host of The Tonight Show. And following Conan, is it uh, Chris Kattan? I believe it is. Chris Kattan is going to replace Conan O'Brien on the late night show. And so there's been speculation about where Jay Leno was going to go. And in fact, many people believe that uh, Jay was going to ABC at 11.30. And then there'd be a three-way competition at 11.30 between Leno, Letterman, and uh, Conan O'Brien. And uh, there was talk that uh, NBC was getting buyer's remorse. There was talk that NBC would pay the $30 million in Conan O'Brien's contract uh, to be let off the hook for putting him on the air beginning next June because they didn't want to have to compete with Jay Leno. And, of course, there's been a lot of talk. Uh, everyone pretty much knew Jay Leno was not retiring. Uh, there was talk about uh, whether it would be ABC or Fox or whether it be syndication, some syndication company like Sony or somebody, who was going to hire Jay Leno and where was he going. We now know where Jay Leno was going. We now know where Jay Leno was going, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But before I do, another story, another story that just blew me away was waking up today and finding out that the Tribune Company is filing for bankruptcy. Filing for bankruptcy. Do you know who the Tribune Company is? We don't have a newspaper in L.A. called the Tribune, so maybe you're not aware of the Tribune Company. The Tribune Company is a conglomerate based in Chicago. They own the Chicago Tribune. More importantly, here in Southern California, they own the Los Angeles Times. Now, less than 20 years ago, the Los Angeles Times appeared to be invincible. They put their last daily Los Angeles competitor out of business, the Herald Examiner. Anybody remember the Herald Examiner? Yeah, nobody does. But it went out of business about 20 years ago. And the L.A. Times had the uh, Los Angeles market, the city of Los Angeles, pretty much to itself, to the point where the Daily News, a newspaper based in Thousand Oaks, which isn't even in L.A. County, it's in Ventura County. <laughs> they kind of tried to creep in and become the other L.A. paper. Not many have noticed. So you had the L.A. Times, 
the big man on campus here in Southern California, and uh, the ownership has changed a couple of times, and now the company that owns the Chicago Tribune also owns the L.A. Times. Filed for bankruptcy today. They also own KTLA TV, Channel 5 here in Los Angeles. <laughs> That's right. Bankrupt. They also want a stake in the CW network. Oh, well. They, uh, until recently, owned the newspaper Newsday on Long Island, which was sold recently to the owners of Cablevision just to raise cash so they can pay down the debt they incurred in buying this big company. And... They own, get this, they own the Chicago Cubs baseball team. And they own the Chicago Cubs stadium, the Wrig that Wrigley Field. They own both. Now, somehow they're trying to claim that the Cubs and Wrigley Field are not part of the bankruptcy, and I imagine there's some kind of fancy footwork being done here. I imagine that if you file for bankruptcy, it gives you a problem with Major League Baseball. So they found some way to exclude the Cubs and Wrigley Field from the bankruptcy. They've been trying to sell the Cubs and Wrigley Field to raise money. Can't find any takers at the price they want uh, to sell. Just like many people are trying to sell their homes and can't get out from under. Now it's happening to the big boys. I remember a year ago watching CNBC, and I remember reading about this guy, Sam Zell, who is uh, known as one of these guys, but primarily from the real estate business. But he's also the guy who put the Clear Channel behemoth together. He uh, bought this company with money he didn't have, borrowed from every possible place, tried to structure it so that he would uh, have this company that was hugely leveraged. And then ultimately he hoped to pay it down from the profits of all the businesses that uh, were owned therein. Well, guess what? I used to watch CNBC, and they would say, what does Sam Zell know that the rest of us don't know? Newspapers are going in the tank. What does he know? He must know something. It turns out he didn't know any more, more than anybody else. <laughs> he overpaid, 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 and uh, now bankruptcy. Just amazing. And their chief operating officer, a former radio guy named Randy Michaels, was operated them right into bankruptcy. Good work, folks. Very nice. So, uh, but I mean, uh, this is just one of many things you hear. You know, like uh, uh, this is a big company filing for bankruptcy. It's big. Bankruptcy. I mean, hell, the company we used to work for, Westwood One. This is not a secret. It's public knowledge. They've been delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, they recently traded as low as two cents a share. This is a stock that was seventy dollars a share, two cents a share. A number of us were here. A uh, number of us who used to work for Westwood One were joking that I could probably buy Westwood One with pocket change. <laughs> but I, I did. I thought it was overpriced at two cents a share. I didn't buy it. It's the way I felt. Because any one of these big media companies are also taking on all their debts. They've all borrowed money. They've all been leveraged. And now they can't pay their bills because they're just like you trying to buy a car. Their credit is frozen. So they can't pay down their debt. They can't restructure their debt. I mean, this is companies in general. That's what Tribune is going through right now. And so... Uh, you have to understand, when I was a kid, you know, WGN Radio in uh, Chicago, WGN TV, these were giants. And, you know, people still perceive them to be giants. But the company that owns them is bankrupt. The company that owns the Chicago Tribune, bankrupt. The company that owns the LA Times, bankrupt. The company that owns KTLA Television in Los Angeles, bankrupt. The company that owns the Chicago Cubs, whether the Cubs are included in the bankruptcy or not, the company is bankrupt. The company that owns Wrigley Field is bankrupt. Holy schmagoli. Not to mention all the radio stations around the country that are running nothing but... Um, Voice tracks or nothing but just nonstop music, no personalities on. These, you know, we're the canary in the coal mine in this business, and I'm not being critical of our business. I'm actually uh, very uh, worried for all the people who work in this business. 
because the economy's hitting us at least as much as it's hitting you. And just so you know, you think we're sitting up here in an ivory tower looking down on you. Uh, believe me, the flames have reached us, too. They've reached all of us. Every one of us. And, um, you know, our whole thing is just to uh, plug away and keep doing the best work we can and keep getting results for our advertisers and help people through this time. And I do agree with our president-elect Obama that uh, we're all going to come through this leaner, meaner, stronger for the experience. But it's going to be painful as we go. It's painful today. And, um, you know, Tribune is a... Uh, uh, in a sense, it's a competitor, but also, you know, KTLA Channel 5. We have a lot of friends over there. Um, you know, we're not happy to see this happen to anybody. We're, we're not. And I'm certainly not gloating about it. But um, it's just like you've heard about all these retail companies, you know, uh, Mervyn's and Linens and Things and Shoe Pavilion. and uh, You know, so many of these stores, so many of these mall stores going out of business. So many of these retail establishments going out of business. Starbucks profits down 95% year to year. 95%. The whole Starbucks chain in the last quarter made $5 million. That's the whole chain. All those hundreds of stores you see out there, $5 million bucks. It's pretty amazing. Crazy. You see stuff happening you wouldn't have believed. But, so here's another one, and this is how it ties in. Where is Jay Leno going? Where's he going to go? Is he going to go to ABC? 11.30? They move Kimmel to 12.30? And they put Jay Leno on at 1130? No. It's not going to happen. Does he go to Fox? Word on the street was that Fox is going to off from 11 o'clock. He'd get a half hour start on Conan. Uh, Fox Broadcasting generally does not have an 11 o'clock newscast. They have their news at 10 because they only program until 10 p.m. So they've got uh, entertainment programming beginning at 11. They could have put Jay Leno on at 11 o'clock, but will that happen? No. Will Jay Leno go to work for a syndicator? You know, somebody like uh, Sony, for example. Sony's a big uh, TV syndicator, Telepictures, somebody like that. Uh, the way Arsenio Hall did it years ago for Paramount. Will uh, Jay Leno like uh, be uh, syndicated like Oprah Winfrey is syndicated? Uh, you know, they'll have to sell the show individually to individual stations and individual markets rather than having it be on one network at the same time all over the country. That was a possibility for Jay Leno. Big money in that, too. No. This is the shocker. What is going to happen to Jay Leno? He's not retiring. Where is he going? I'm going to tell you where he's going. This is outrageous. For years, NBC has had dramatic programs on at 10 o'clock. Like ER would be the most successful of those 10 o'clock shows. Other one-hour dramatic series. And in recent years, those shows have been failing. And they are very expensive. They cost These shows cost a couple of million dollars an episode. And NBC, which is now in fourth place in the ratings, behind Fox, not to mention CBS and ABC, uh, they are looking for ways to cut costs. So here's what they're going to do. Uh, a talk show is one of the cheapest forms of programming available because there's no scenery, there's no actors, there's very little in the way of residuals or back end, as they call it in the show business. Um, you know, you uh, put a guy out there with a monologue and then a desk and a couch and a couple of microphones, six or seven comedy writers, and uh, bing, bang, boom, you got a show. They are very profitable to produce. Very low cost. So starting uh, probably by next fall, this is according to Broadcasting and Cable Magazine. Jay Leno is going to have a new show at 10 p.m. on NBC. What, you know, ER is going off the air. They're having their final episode, as you probably know. And uh, NBC really doesn't have anything all that exciting at 10 o'clock during the week. So um, they're going to give up programming, scripted programming at 10 o'clock and save money and also solve the headache of possibly having to compete with Jay Leno. By putting him on from 10 to 11, Monday through Friday. So Jay Leno will move to prime time 
starting next year. This is a fact. Jay Leno moves to 10 p.m. So you'll have Jay at 10, Conan at 11.30, and um, the old Conan O'Brien show with, I believe, Chris Kattan is doing that show at 12.30. That's what they're doing. Now, interesting, but why does it tie him to all this stuff? Can you believe that late night talk shows now are going to move into prime time? Like, what if CBS put David Letterman on a 10 to compete with Jay Leno? <laughs> I mean, this is unbelievable. 10 o'clock on TV is generally hour long dramatic series. Jay Leno is going to go up against prime time dramatic shows. Uh, by the way, where's Law & Order going? I don't even know. And aren't some of those CSI shows on at 10 o'clock? But Jay Leno's going to be up against prime time programming from 10 to 11 every night. Uh, how will he do in the ratings against those shows? Well, who even knows? I mean, at 1130, it's a much smaller audience than 10 o'clock. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Because believe me, if he makes any headway against those uh, 10 o'clock shows on networks like CBS, if he makes any headway, guaranteed CBS will do the same thing. Guaranteed. But it's all because of the economy. This stuff is happening because of the economy. The economy is changing everything. The lousy economy is changing stuff at a rapid clip. And because it's my job to keep up with uh, uh, pop culture and keep up with the news and keep up with what's going on in the media, I've got to tell you, in all the years I've worked in radio and uh, worked in some of the ancillary uh, businesses I've been in here, I've never seen the rate of change at the rate I'm seeing it now. And I think you're going to see more changes like this. I mean, here in L.A., you'll have uh, the news on Channel 11 and Channel 9, and Channel 5 at 10 o'clock. But uh, on Channel 4, you'll have Jay Leno. What's that going to mean for the local newscasts? Channel 5 parent company is bankrupt. What's that going to mean for them? <laughs> I mean, that's what this is all based on, the lousy economy. Are you starting to get me here? Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you here? Stuff is changing like we never imagined it would. And I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think we're in for a lot more change in the media business along with every other kind of business. I mean, you wake up every day. One day you hear General Motors might go out of business or General Motors will merge with Chrysler or the Tribune Corporation is filing for bankruptcy or Jay Leno's going to prime time to save NBC money. It goes on and on and on. Shocking stuff, one after another. What do you think about all this? Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. No! It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. You damn straight. Uh, talking about some of the changes uh, in the economy and business, in the media business. It's pretty outrageous. Let's say hello here to Ronnie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Ronnie. Tom, pleasure to speak with you. The first time caller. Sure. Hey, I was wondering... Uh, you know, with uh, everything going on with media and the airwaves, and uh, I was wondering, how much do you think this is going to affect the upfronts uh, next year in terms of, you know, commercial dollars and, and how that works? Well, we should explain what the upfronts are before we start using industry jargon. I mean, the upfronts are, uh, by the way, are they all even going to do an upfront presentation? Uh, that seems to be changing, too. But uh, the upfronts are these events that the networks hold every year, lots of glitz and glamour, where they try to get all their stars together in front of an audience of advertising agency execs and media buyers, and they try to sell advertising in advance of the season beginning, in many cases, uh, before the ad agencies have even had a chance to see the shows they're sponsoring. So um, they've traditionally spent a lot of money on this little junket, and uh, now uh, I believe that uh, some of them are uh, abandoning the upfront concept altogether. Wow. Wow. Yeah, because I understand. Um, I had a friend who was in industry, and it was just, you know, she educated me in the whole process, and it's just amazing how it works with um, buying futures, you know, in terms of programming and all that. And I'm wondering, all these uh, 
movie companies or what have you that spent all this money, they're probably just going to go bankrupt with the with the ratings and how it is, the whole, just everything going on in TV. So, I'm just wondering what, what, how you feel about all this. And, well, uh, I mean, the fact that NBC is going to remove five hours of scripted programming for Jay Leno, five hours a week. Wow. I mean, you know, when you add in all the reality shows they've put on the air, which are not, quote-unquote, not scripted. Of course, we all know they are. Mm. But uh, now you add on five hours of Jay Leno a week to prime time. I mean, wow. it's almost getting to the point where I, I'm, I'm, I keep hearing they, them saying things like ratings don't matter anymore. It's how much money you make on a show. Yeah, you know, I kind of miss the old days when uh, you had some of the uh, guys on radio had their own little talk shows on Saturday nights. So a couple names that I don't want to mention, but uh, I don't know. Like around the '90s and '80s, you know, it was a little different. I wonder if we're going to go back to that, where you have a lot of uh, programming changing, where you have people who are on radio actually do some uh, some live talk shows, you know, middle of the night, like on Saturdays or Fridays. Well, uh, that's uh, certainly possible. Uh, you know, I, I believe me uh, when they look for cheap programming. Uh, the first well they go to is radio. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm sure we'll be hearing from the TV people again. Hey, one more thing, Tom, if you don't mind. Uh, Sunday, you were talking about a very strong Merlot, and uh, for some reason, I, I, I hit the, the scan button and I mixed. I missed what that Merlot will, you're that talking will, about. That will teach you to hit the <laughs> scan button. <laughs> you were talking about a very strong Merlot. And uh, I'm going to have to, I don't know if you guys uh, well, podcast that. Can I catch it on a podcast? Uh, no, or? I'll save you the time. But next time, I'm not going to do it again, okay? It's Gargiulo Vineyards. Gargiulo Vineyards. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate it, Tom. Na Napa Valley. Can you blow me up? Yes. Yes, I can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Jack on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing Okay. Hey, I don't think the Jay Little thing at 10 will work, because people have been used to the talk shows on at 11.30 for like 50-some-odd years, and it's kind of, for lack of better words, a shock to the system. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not into it. Well, it's certainly different. Uh, I, it's been a long time since a talk show was on in prime time on one of the major yeah. networks. Yeah, I can't remember the last time. I think on Arsenio started at 11, so... Yeah, but Arsenio, I know, but Arsenio was not a network show. Arsenio was right. in syndication. Right, right. Uh, so, the, sure. I, I mean, yeah, this is different. This is stopping down the entire NBC network and saying, okay, Jay Leno is on every NBC affiliate at 10 o'clock. Right, it'll be interesting. So, yeah. Hey, take me out Heath Ledger style and Lacey Peterson style. Boy, that's a, a, a couple of greats right there. I wish I knew how to quit you. Ah! Amber. Hey. Amber. Amazing things going on in the media business. Jay Leno will move from The Tonight Show to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. And among the reasons, certainly, is so NBC can save money on programming costs. Which is amazing. Tribune Corporation, which owns a variety of TV and radio stations, as well as the Los Angeles Times and the Chicago Tribune, filed for bankruptcy today. Uh, can you believe some of the stuff that's going on? What do you think about all this? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Tom. The Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, I'm going to tell you Job like a show. Shorter breaks. More calls. Take them faster. Now on six days a week. Here is on Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. On 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. You don't live in L.A.? Log on to our website. BlowMeUpTom.com. Click on the Listen Live button. And you'll be all hooked up. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Can you believe the changes we're seeing in business, in society, in the media? All because the economy is lousy. Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. Good. Well, this, I mean, as far as NBC is concerned, I guess uh, moving Leno to an earlier slot almost might be a not necessarily a cost-cutting method, 
more of a competitive play. Um, I guess to compete with other networks, and also, I mean, NBC. Well, is no, wait a minute. I, I, as much as I, as much as I like Jay Leno, um, can a we and we don't know the answer to this question. Can a talk show compete with CSI or some of these other ten o'clock dramatic shows that are on, uh, say, CBS? Well, I think the fan, and I think that the other thing that NBC is doing is they're leveraging their, uh, you know, their content across other platforms like Hulu.com is something that they've used a lot, and they're getting a lot of views and advertising dollars in new media, and, and maybe that's another way they can kind of leverage another show in, in various outlets, not necessarily just on a TV platform. Well, uh, it's an interesting experiment uh, but because, uh, you know, if Jay Leno did well, that's good for all the local stations that run newscasts after uh, NBC's primetime programming. Uh, and NBC's 10 o'clock shows, with the exception of ER, have not been doing well the last few years. So, I mean, it's a very interesting and intriguing idea. And you have to wonder what it's going to mean. If, if there's a talk show on at 10 o'clock and every night it starts getting ratings, what will the other networks do? I guess you got to shift to compete. It's, awesome. it's a that. lot cheaper to produce Jay Leno doing a talk show than it is to produce Brothers and Sisters on ABC or one of those without a trace. True. I just I can't imagine that NBC is using it as a cost cutting measure. I guess. Well, NBC had already uh, at one time. Uh, ben Silverman, the president of NBC programming, had said that uh, they were going to stop. Uh, they were going to stop putting dramatic shows or comedies on after 9 o'clock at night. They were going to run a lot more reality shows and game shows. Now, of course, that didn't turn out to be true because The Office is on at that time. And uh, uh, they've got another show called Worst Week and a bunch of other shows that are, that are not reality shows and game shows. Uh, but the point is they have uh, t uh, toyed around with this idea of cutting costs. And it, it's been in the trade papers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I'm in new media for a, for a studio, and I mean, we definitely have seen a shift too in our content as far as the uh, amount of buys that we see and views. Kind of, you know, people want things for free; they don't want to pay for it right now. So that's kind of a shift that we're seeing. But when you say people want things for free, what do you mean? Well, you can go to Hulu.com and watch, you know, full episodes of the full episodes of Saturday Night Live. I mean, all you have to do is watch a 30 second ad and. You know, you don't. You're not watching three minute commercial breaks. You, you don't have to pay for the content. You're watching it all for free, and, and I know right. TV's free. But well, the content, the content is free already, though. Right, but I mean, to be able to t cut out three and a half minutes of uh, of ad time where you only are watching a smaller amount. I mean, that's that's a value proposition. No, there's there's no doubt about. It. By the way, here's something I don't understand about all those online services like Hulu. Why don't they leave the commercials in? I mean, you can't fast forward through them the way they have it constructed. You might as well just run the commercials. Well, I think it's, uh, now you're getting, now you're getting uh, the ability to just watch one ad throughout the whole entire piece of content if you choose to do so. It's a little bit longer ad. I think that the reason why you got to do that is, you know, who's trying to make the money uh, from the ad dollars just like everybody else. Right, is. but what I'm saying is uh, put commercials in uh, when when you rerun a show or you repurpose a show for the internet. Uh, just set the player up so you can't fast forward through the commercials and just run the original commercial load, even if it's different commercials. Yeah, I agree. It makes no uh, sense to me that they, that you don't have to watch, uh, and by the way, ABC puts all their shows online with, uh, you watch, uh, by the way, they, they do have more than one ad on the ABC website. They've got about three or four. 30 second spots that you watch if you want to watch an episode of, I don't know, Desperate Housewives, one of those shows. Yep. But Hulu, you're right. There's one spot at the beginning, and then you see the show without commercials. And um, I don't get it. How do they expect to make the money back on the cost of producing these shows? No, I agree. I think unless you're doing it on multiple platforms, it's going to be tough. That's uh, definitely a paradigm that's taking place. Nick, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How are you doing, Dad? Doing okay, sir. Excellent. First time, big fan. Uh, Hulu is definitely uh, the future, I think, of media. Uh, Jay Leno shifting to an earlier time and uh, all the changes in media, I think, are just indications of the advertising world changing. Keep in mind, Hulu will broadcast several spots through an episode where you can't fast forward, but you can charge a higher premium. Look what's going on with TiVo and DVRs. Nobody watches commercials anymore. I know I don't. I'll flip a channel if, I, if I'm not on a TV that has a DVR. So, you know, we're all uh, victims to watching commercials. That's where the revenue, the, you know, without that model, we wouldn't have TV, we wouldn't have radio, we wouldn't have any of the media outlets that we have. 
But I think uh, it's a time where the advertising agencies out there got to get smart and target those ads a little bit better. So, you know, if I got to watch Vince at ShamWow, you know, another 10 times, I'll kill myself. But if I got to see commercials about something I was interested in, let's say a Napa Valley winery, I'd watch those commercials. So I think there's going to be this shift in what commercials are broadcast. It's going to be more targeted. It's going to be more of a sniper than the shotgun blast that's, that's been the medium for so long. Yeah, well, uh, everything's going to change uh, during that period of time. It's going to be painful for a lot of people who work in the business. And it's going to be uh, interesting for the consumer. I mean, the consumer right now is having a great time because you can time shift programs. You can watch them whenever you want. You can store them for months at a time and not watch them forever. I, I just found out that Boston Legal was canceled. It's a show that I've been watching ever since the beginning. Um, now, maybe it wouldn't have been canceled had I watched the eight episodes that I've been storing on my DVR I haven't caught up with yet. Uh, yeah, true. You know, TiVo will record that stuff. TiVo has those ratings, which is detrimental to Nielsen because the Nielsen model is going to be gone. Uh, you know, as soon as people start to figure out how to really tangibly track audience numbers. Uh, and it's unfortunate when you see shows that you're fans of that, that go away. Uh, and it's usually a, a, a advertising lack thereof. That's why those things disappear and the production costs go up. And you see those things go away, but we're all consumers. You know, we all purchase products every day. I'd like to watch commercials on products I'm interested in rather than watch stuff I'm not interested in, you know? Oh, I understand that. But by the same token, it can be argued that many times you don't know you're interested in something until you're exposed to it. Very true. And what's happening now with newspapers, for example, is rather than flipping through the paper and looking for interesting stories... Uh, people just kind of graze the headlines and uh, cherry pick a couple of items that look interesting, and then they they leave the rest of it behind. Yeah, very true. What about uh, what are your thoughts on product placement? You know, it started with uh, Reese's Pieces and Spielberg and ET, and now you see uh, Night Rider shift to the GM platform instead. Or I the have no problem with product placement. We're not talking about great art here. Okay, I mean, if Knight Rider is based on product placement, come on, it's it's not like we're we're putting product placement into Shakespeare. True, Hopefully so not. it doesn't offend me. If if an episode of The Office takes place in a Chili's, which actually a couple of episodes have in the past, yeah. uh, or Staples, uh, I'm not offended by that. If that helps keep the show on the air, I am not offended. And, and, think, and, yeah, and I frankly, I think if you worked in an office, it's likely you would go to Staples. Very true. Very true. And I think that's a better way to go. I think that's a, a gentler way to incorporate uh, a common interest to the audience. And it brings in a revenue stream. You know, if these guys are struggling, they need to figure out how to work the product placement better into the, to the mix. Well, I will tell you, uh, we are uh, uh, light years behind Argentina. Um, I have on my DirecTV, I have access to a uh, an Argentine network called Telefe. And uh, there are some programs on there that do the most masterful job integrating commercials into shows so that you want to watch them. Um, remarkable. If anyone in the TV business is listening to me right now, you could save yourself a lot of trouble by getting a look at the Telefe Network out of uh, Argentina, and I'll tell you what shows to watch, and you will see what I'm talking about. It will blow you away. And, and Argentina has by far the most beautiful women on the planet, so yep. I think that's another added value there, definitely. They, a good reason to fly down and take a look at what's on TV. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, this is the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. All kinds of things in the news to talk about having to do with the media business. Tribune Company, owners of the Los Angeles Times, the Chicago Tribune, KTLA TV here in Los Angeles, WGN TV in Chicago, WGN Radio Chicago, they own Chicago Cubs, they own Wrigley Field, they own a TV station in Denver. <laughs> File for bankruptcy. Holy cow! 
And Jay Leno. We know what Jay Leno will do after he's done hosting The Tonight Show next May. NBC is going to scrap the cost of producing five one-hour dramatic shows Monday through Friday from 10 to 11. And they're going to put Jay Leno on from 10 to 11. Conan O'Brien will do The Tonight Show at 11.30. And, uh, uh, oh, it's Jimmy Fallon, not Chris Kattan, doing the uh, Conan O'Brien show. By the way, I told you I'm, I'm Rain Man. Jimmy Fallon and Chris Kattan have the same number of letters in their first and last names. And that's why I confuse them. I know they're two completely different people. But Jimmy Fallon will replace Conan O'Brien. 1-800-5800-TOB is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Angel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Hey, Tom. I've got a statement. When do you plan to deliver it? Uh, right now. I'm laughing my ass off all the way to the bank with uh, reality right now. And uh, I tried my hardest to get into uh, regular shows, and it was not possible. I got into reality and was, like, totally ashamed about it. So you're, you're like an after actress is what you are? No, no, no. I, SAG? I'm a no, I'm a PA on reality. Uh, oh, you're a PA. Production right, assistant. Do-it-yourself home improvement uh, show. And uh, I'm just laughing my ass off because all these shows are going down, and now reality's up, and... You know, I tried my hardest to get into that industry, and it, they would not take me for nothing. It's so hard to get in, and reality has been beating me and my family. And you're going to see a whole lot more reality going out there. Well, Jay Leno is a reality show, essentially, because uh, right. it's not scripted. Right, right. Well, uh, so point. Reality isn't really reality. It is scripted. Well, completely. so is Jay Leno. But, I mean, the point is, it's not fiction. It's not fiction like as we know fiction. Right, right, right. But uh, and and it's just it's just another way to cut costs. It's so it's so much cheaper. You're not paying any union dues. Uh, you know, it, it's just a whole lot cheaper to to produce. Well, this is why Jay Leno will be uh, super cheap for prime time. I mean, the guests on that show get scale. Uh, it, it's for me. Like I said, I'm laughing all the way to the bank. Uh, the SAG strike that may happen. It's just this is the worst time to do it. That just I mean. I would love for them to go on strike. That, that, by the way, you're making another point. If there's a SAG strike, uh, Jay Leno will probably stay on the air like he did during a lot of the writer's strike. Right. And and it would be great for me. I mean, it's, it's better for my for the field that I'm in. It would be more reality shows for us. Uh, I, could, I could even stump shows with the amount that it's about, that's about to go into production right now. And uh, if they strike, they're the, that's the dumbest thing they could ever do. And I'll laugh at the, to the bank again. Angel, thank you. Don on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going tonight? Great. Well, I was actually kind of wanting to chime in and uh, think about, you know, where are the networks like HBO and Cinemax going to go? You know, they don't generate any money through advertising. I think, on the other hand, they spend a lot of money on advertising. Well, people pay twelve ninety five a month to see them. I just think that... What are you paying to watch having, NBC? You're paying zero. Well, people are also cutting back on these things. And on top of that, I can't imagine that the millions of dollars that they pay to rerun these movies and the shows that they make, I can't imagine it's all covered in subscription costs. That just, well, I believe I read that uh, Showtime, for example, uh, just ended a bunch of movie deals because they said they couldn't reach uh, agreement on the price of running the movies. And they're trying to find other sources for film, like independent film. Showtime will now show more independent film and less blockbusters. I mean, similarly, uh, HBO has canceled quite a few shows with very good ratings just for the simple fact that, you know, their shows were so popular that they couldn't even afford the actors anymore because they blew up. Deadwood being a prime example. Well, Deadwood, if I recall, was Deadwood the show where the producer quit to produce that other show called John from Cincinnati, which was a big bomb? I'm not quite sure. I think that's um, what actually happened. actually talking about trying to continue the show. Um, it had to do with the actors. Uh, it had to do with budgeting, is what I read in an interview. Well, it's all possible, and uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, the discretionary spending being cut, uh, pay channels on your cable, will probably be one of the things to go. It's David on the Tom Likas show. Hello, David. Hey, Tom. i got to say, uh, 
Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am still laughing at the PA from a couple calls back because uh, my wife was in production and he said he's laughing all the way to the bank and I'm just picturing a piggy bank that he's uh, laughing all the way to because those guys make minimum wage. <laughs> Anywho, I, I, I got to... I gotta, I gotta ask. I mean, I know you're on seven days a week here in SoCal now, and I'm thinking that the economy's got to be hitting you. It's probably Jack Silver coming in and saying, "Look, you got to take a pay cut, or you're out in the street, or I need you seven days a week for well, the same amount what? of money." Well, guess what? I have a contract, so uh, <laughs> my contract states what days I work and what hours I work, and that's that. Make sure that Frosty, Heidi, and Frank have the same contract. Now, because, hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, we're all on our own here. You know, it's every man for himself. <laughs> hey, Tom, take me on travel cell. Thanks here so much. Here you go, David. Baninge, 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 so finza. Baninge, 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 so finza. Han on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. Uh, long time listener, second time caller. Thank you. I, uh, I'm calling, uh, to kind of talk more about the Hulu thing and running the ads less, uh, frequently and less ads and what my theories are about that. Um, I, I, uh, like I was telling your screener. Well, wait, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. You were telling my screener something? Hang on a second. Dean? Could you come in here one second, please? Oh, how close were we the whole day, man? Well, come on, sit down. we got to find out here. Hans says that you two are having a conversation. Uh, what were the two of you talking about? Uh, he was saying that less ads on a site like uh, Hulu uh, is better. It, having less ads better off because it'll allow more people to watch it because uh, otherwise they'll go to BitTorrent sites and download it illegally. So he's felt that less ads is better for the consumer. Had I talked to Han myself, I would have told him I don't believe that's true because it takes so long to download something from a site like BitTorrent. It's easier just to watch the ads on Hulu. But Han will never hear me say that now. Thank you, sir. Because he was busy talking to you. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptop.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.